Hello and welcome back. As always, my name is Lazar and today we're gonna talk a little bit about the Cho'Gall patch. We're gonna do somewhat of a patch review. Go and go over some of the more important additions in this patch. So first off, we got a new battleground, so let's skip right to it. We got the Towers of Doom. Now, I did kind of a tutorial for this map. I'm gonna link it in cards, okay, if you guys wanna check that out. I'm gonna talk a little bit about my feelings towards this battleground and in short I like it okay it's a nice battleground I like the feeling it gives that gloomy kind of Halloweenish feeling you know I like the artwork I like the design I like the somewhat of a new gameplay concept if you like okay it's not completely new okay let's not get anybody um, but it does offer a new perspective okay cores are protected are walled off you can't attack them directly if you get too close to the core you're gonna get hammered <laughs> plain and simple okay uh, the bell towers uh, will now replace forts okay if you destroy one it will start rebuilding your own team colors if you activate an altar all the bell towers will do one damage each to the enemy team score and that's how you damage the core the core start off with 40 hp and the boss on this specific map is the headless horseman when upon capturing him you will do four damage to the enemy core and the uh, other mercenaries the bruiser camp if you will and now also is different we got sappers now which suicide when they come close to enemy structures pretty nice okay i like the concept i like that they're trying to push the envelope and give us something a little bit different they did try a coreless design initially which sounds awesome doesn't it okay sounds awesome sauce but unfortunately it didn't work out anyway overall i like it there is no snowballing on this map but that's not really because of the map that's because of the scaling changes they did to heroes of the storm but we're gonna talk about that later so overall for the battleground i like it okay my impressions are good of it i enjoyed my time i like mostly everything about it up until this point at least all right let's go on art not important hero ability is not really important user interface now on the minimap the minimap will now visually indicate when allied heroes are using hearthstone to return to hall of storms awesome additionally a chat message will be displayed whenever an ally activates hearthstone whenever an ally activates hearthstone you know that taunting thing we do guys in heroes of the storm would we keep be pressed and we move a little out just to taunt the enemy team try that out see how that works all right design and gameplay uh scaling changes we're gonna talk about these a little bit later not important tool tips not important okay let's get to talent changes now in the past i asked you guys if you would prefer my live analysis of the changes or do you want scripted and well 80 percent of you guys said we want live so here we go live okay i intentionally didn't read all this stuff just so i can do it live so Gathering power, I did read this one, okay, <laughs> I did read this one. Hero takedowns now increase ability power by 2% per kill, up to a maximum of 30%. All stacks are now also lost upon death. Now, as I said in my previous patch review, the over nerf they did to gathering power would have meant nobody would pick it up. And what do you know, almost nobody picked it up, huh, who would have funk it? Anyway, with this new change, I am pretty sure Gathering Power will come back into the meta somewhat, especially for somebody like uh, Nova. I see Nova with full stacks on this deal, Herp Derp damage, and I, when I say Herp Derp damage, I mean Herp Derp, you're dead damage. Awesome. Why is it awesome? I'm not a fan of the concept of the Gathering Power talent, okay, let me make myself clear. However, it was dead wood at this point, nobody would pick this thing up. Okay, and it's just a shame. Make it so it's a choice, if possible. Okay, so I like it that it will definitely now be more picked up. Absolutely, with this 30%. Are you kidding me? Wow. But uh, all stacks are lost upon death, so it's more risk reward. Absolutely. Welcome change from my point of view. Let's move on to hero changes. Assassin false that. Okay, let's see what they do. Conjures pursuit talent removed. Irrelevant. Gathering power talent removed. Hmm. Okay, with these changes, this um, would have meant that spell damage false that would have been more viable, but with this removed, um, I don't know. Okay, hammer rank. Power throw, move from level 1 to level... F Wait a second. Does this mean what I think it means? Was it at level 7? Hold on, let me pull up a uh, talent calculator real quick, guys. This might be cool, but first let's go through this. Uh, level 1 talent gathering storm. This is a new talent. Permanently increases hammer ranks damage by 1 every time it damages an enemy hero. Every time it damages. So going through and going back, you could stack this up nicely. Interesting. Increases hammer ranks damage, so that's spell damage. Okay. Flow rider talent no longer decreases battle rolls cooldown. Why? What does it do now? Oh, okay. <laughs> now causes basic ability to recharge 100% faster while Tailwind trait is active. 
Tailwind is your passive, so you could play false stat just to stand uh, at the edge of the fight, right, to stay out of the fight and just spam abilities, but your W kind of requires you to get in melee range anyway, so uh, I don't know about this one, but anyway, this, this I believe is a big deal if I'm not mistaken, let me pull up a telling calculator really quick, guys, okay, let's see, what was the shortcut, there we go. Alright, so Talon Calculator for Falstead. Just a second, guys. I'm suspecting something. I am suspecting something. Where are you, stupid chicken rider? Okay, so they moved this power throw to level. Yeah, baby. Awesome sauce. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. This is gonna be awesome. This means what, guys? At level 1, we're gonna go for Season Marksman. Absolutely. At level 4, we're gonna pick up the Power Throw. And then we'll be able to chain it with Secret Weapon. So it's gonna go Season, uh, season uh, Marksman at level 1. Level 4 is gonna be Power Throw. And level 7 is gonna be Secret Weapon. Bloody awesome. This will make Falstad, from my point of view, an auto-attack machine. I gotta do a build guide. Definitely gotta do a build guide on this guy. I gotta try it out. This seems awesome to me. Welcome change. False was a bit underwhelming from my point of view. He wasn't as strong as other assassins. You've seen him played with Mighty Gust into mad combinations. Something like Butcher's Hitching Post and whatnot. Okay, you could do that in controlled environments. Okay, with the 5 stack and so on and so forth. But usually people go for this. So how, how would this go? You're gonna go this depending on your situation, your controlled environment you wanna do. Uh, Mad combination is gonna go like this. If not, you're gonna go like this. Here we are gonna have power throw. Okay, giant killer, absolutely 40 auto attacks. What was the. Na, 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 na. Okay, at this level, is the, was it the new thing? No, every gust reduces. Nah, two seconds. Nah, I don't know. Hammer time, you're. Oh, yeah, the stun. Definitely the stun. Not gonna take overdrive cells when we're building auto attack. Then after burden, nah, 16. Nah. And at the final tier, you know, it's gonna be Nexus Frenzy. I'm suspecting this will be the new meta build. Okay, first time glance, okay? Don't chop my head off, please. Alright, guys. Oh, wait, did I switch? Can I switch the PTR here? Oh, hello! Okay, yeah, okay, so now, now I got full build. Okay, so this is how it's gonna go, guys. I'm 90% sure on this one. Okay, awesome, awesome. Let's get back to talents. I love it, okay? Overall, I love the changes to full set. He was a bit underwhelming, like I said, from my point of view. Alright, Jaina, honey, how you been? Deep chill talent. Bonus to movement speed slow applied by children 35 to 30. Okay, guys, now... I was suspecting this for a long while. Now, you might ask, why is Jaina so played? She doesn't do outstanding damage, sure, her damage for Assassin is absolutely solid and nobody can deny that. But this was the reason people play Chain all that time. That's why you see her being played everywhere, at tournaments, Euro League, Team League, whatever. The CC, the amount of CC she's got, every one of her abilities bloody applies a slow and everybody at level 1 would take the, uh, the chill talent, okay? For, uh, to, for the slow to be 45%. Now it's gonna be 30. I don't think this is that big of a deal. Okay, it, it nerfs her a little bit, just a small bit, but I don't think she'll drop from meta because of this. Welcome nerf, okay? Uh, she's got way too much CC, but I don't think this little nerf here would change that. Zero tool, what did they do to you this time, friend? Besides killing you. Uh, focused, I'm not gonna say more. Focused attack talent, what? Oh man. Oh, come on, Blizz. Damn it. New talent level 4, uh, Warblade, and refer, uh, 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 huh. Oh, I see what you did there. Okay, so they remove focused attack. I can't do it immediately, but they give me this thing now. 100 bonus damage on my third basic consecutive basic attack against the same hero. Okay, this smells like burst nerf. Okay, Zeratul is known for his burst, okay, that's what Zeratul does, you see an enemy squishy low, all vulnerable and delicious, you go in and you burst it down, that's what you do as a Zeratul, and you use your Void Prison to lock out part of the enemy team so you can give your own an advantage. This is a nerf to his burst, he has been receiving several nerfs, is that enough Blizz, are you done, come on, that's enough. No more burst, but he's got sustain, obviously this talent, this, um, uh, Master Warp Blade is gonna work with his second heroic ability, the one which most people don't take. What is it? Shadow Attack. But then again, <laughs> Focused Attack works fine with Shadow Attack in the first place. I don't know. Nerfing his burst, was that really necessary? Um, I'm not really sure. Would this uh, propel the Zero Tool lower in the meta? Probably. He doesn't have burst anymore, but he still got that awesome Void Prison. We'll have to test. A bit of an overkill on this one. I'm not sure he really needed the burst on the nerf. 
Uh, the nerf on the burst, sorry. But anyway, let's continue to Karazim. What did you do? Inside trade. Oh, did you make it useful? Mana regeneration grant. Eh, pointless. Nobody's gonna pick it up. Uh, right, guys. Inside, like I said in my Karazim build guide, and I still hold true to this uh, aspect. Inside is the worst pick you can have at level 1 for Karazim. Inside can only be somewhat useful, a little bit useful on maps where the early game is very important. Guess what map that is? Battlefield of Eternity, uh, what is it? The Golden Map. Uh, Haunted Mines, okay? On that, but considering the scaling changes they did, okay? I don't think this is it's pointless. Overall pointless. No. Iron Fist, damage bonus granted for every third, uh, from 100 to 125 bonus. Okay, okay, so this they're trying to pump up the other uh, traits for Kerosene because the one everybody picks up is the healing one, okay? That's what you build Kerosene with. You go for the healing trait. These two buffs will not change this. Uh, Iron Fist trait is, is nice because, okay, damage Kerosene now will be slightly more efficient, 25% on the... But again, it's on the third basic, and ah, not that big of a deal. Uter, hello Paladin, Eternal Devotion Trade Spirit, uh, what? Ah, oh, come on. Blizzard, can you make up your mind about Uter? You guys remember the day when we used to rush in with Uter on Sprint and then do that horrible Divine Storm and then troll was... <laughs> that was the best initiation in game. <laughs> Not much you can do about it. Stitches could gorge him. Okay, chump him up. But that that wasn't really much you could do about it. Running in and just AOE stunning you. Okay, so we got spirit for uh, spirit form duration decrease from ten to eight. So less time in a spirit form, less healing. Divine shield. Oh uh oh, blazy cooldown increase from seventy to ninety. Uh, Twenty, thirty percent, thirty percent increase. Uther has been such a strong support. When they took away our Divine Storm and Sprint, we found other ways to use Uther efficiently. And we did. Now they're nerfing this as well. Is it warranted? That would be the question. Well, if everybody plays him and he's like the top support, him and Tyrande, then yeah. Better see Tyrande on this list, Blizzard. Warrior Leoric, the Skeleton King himself. Drain Hope W, cooldown decrease from 10 to 11. Why the hell are you decreasing the... Wait, wait. If Leoric is stunned while casting Drain Hope, the stun is no longer... Eh, this is more of a bug fix, if anything else. Damage dealt and health gain redu... Ooh, by 25% from 25, yes, but overall the actual healing and damage is 25% reduction. Oh god. Well, is this warranted? I believe so. I believe so. Now, they did give him a small reduce and cooldown. This doesn't really matter for Jack. Okay, don't look at this. This is the big deal right here. This is the big deal. And damage and healing now increases over time as a flat value. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, 25% on less. Uh, this is a big deal. Less sustain for Uther. Did uh, Uther, my bad, Leoric. Did Leoric have too much sustain? Now, if I compare him to Joanna. Joanna is tanky. She takes not a lot of damage, but she doesn't have a lot of sustain. The Auric takes more damage, but had more sustain. My question is, will this bring him into balance somewhat? Because the problem is with Leoric. He deals a lot of damage. The Bastard deals a lot of damage, too much damage, considering how tanky he is. Okay. Is this warranted? You are nerfing the sustain. I would much have been happier with his damage being nerfed, considering he is a warrior, okay, than his sustain. Will this make him drop from meta? 25% less on uh, on uh, Drain Hope. I don't know. Let's let's consider Death Timers, okay? I do believe that now that the Death Timers have been increased, the fact that Leoric can cheat that Death Timer is all makes him all the more important, okay? He can cheat that damn Death Timer, okay? Uh, so that. Uh, considering again uh, the extra death timers, we get the extra duration and death timers we got up until the level t uh, till level ten should make the auric more important. But they did this. We'll have to see how it goes, folks. Uh, I don't think again this will make him drop too hard. Hopefully, I may be wrong on this one. Rixar, oh, oh, finally, I like this one. Misha trade D. Misha death timer portrait will now appear in the death time. Who the hell cares? The frequency at which Rixar's voiceover will play when com- What is this? Has been re- Who the hell care? Blizz! What the- Misha fixate at- Really? 
Alright, so pointless. Why is this even here and not at some other section? I don't get it. Bug fixes, battleground. Uh, this is the boring stuff. Nothing really interesting. Alright, guys, there's two things I left out. Alright, on purpose. Two very, very big things. Some of the biggest modifications uh, brought to Heroes of the Storm ever. Okay, this is a change in. Uh, this is a fundamental change for the game, which has me genuinely worried. Okay, no bullshit, no joking around, no messing around, anything like that. There's two issues here: the changes in scaling. Okay, uh, this is one of the issue. The other issue is the in-game score screen. Okay, and it is also the uh, I don't know where the hell it is. The uh, increase in death timers. Okay, these are the three big issues for Heroes of the Storm at this point. I'm not gonna hassle too much about them. Why is that? I did a separate video on these because they are very important from my point of view. I'm gonna link it in cards again. I recommend you look at that video, you listen more to it. It's a 25 minute video, I know, I'm sorry, but I had to go through a lot of things and even like that I skipped some stuff. It should be worth your time. Long story short, these changes from my point of view are toxic in nature, they are against what Heroes of the Star uh, Heroes of the Storm stood for? Okay, it's against the initial design mentality for Heroes of the Storm, and I mostly don't like them at all. I am very concerned with these changes. And that's gonna wrap it up, folks. Again, take a look at that video if you so desire. As always, my name is Ben Lazar. Thank you guys for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And I'll see you again soon.